Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. Jeremiah 16, 19. We as believers in Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus, use the term love, and most of us have no idea what it means. We grew up in an age where nearly everything is upside down, full of lies and deceit. What is love? Do we go along with what the world defines as love, which is essentially do as you will, or do as you please and just don't offend anybody? But what does scripture say? Tonight, we will dig into the book of 1 John that covers this topic and many other important topics for the body of Messiah. Shabbat Shalom, everyone, and welcome to the Parable of the Vineyard Weekly Gathering. I hope you all are doing well. And as uh, as just stated, we're going to be going over the book of 1 John today, uh, throughout the whole thing, and have some slides prepared for you. So some, uh, some of the verses we're going to kind of just read right through, and some of the verses I want to stop and kind of dig in. Uh, to dig into the Greek, dig into the meaning of, of the actual uh, verse, how it applies today, and um, by the end, of the, uh, by the end of tonight, we're gonna have a pretty good understanding of biblical love. We're gonna be talking about First John, and we'll be connecting it with other scriptures through Corinthians and uh, Deuteronomy, of course. So we'll have an idea uh, for what the Father says love is not what i say what love is not what your pastor down the street says what love is not what um your what, what we what you feel or what i feel what we think or reason may be right but truly what the scriptures actually say so uh so much alone <laughs> uh, hopefully uh, if this is your first time here please make sure you uh, say something in the chat at some point tonight uh, introduce yourself and um if you if you're returning hey well welcome back this is something that we do every single week, of course, Abba willing, every Shabbat, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. And uh, next week, next week, Justin's going to be joining me again, and we're going to be going over the Sabbath, everything you need to know about the Sabbath. So that's going to be interesting. And the week after that, so two weeks from now, we're going to be talking about everything you need to know about Hanukkah, which will be uh, a few days after that Friday. I think it'll be it's going to be in the first couple days of December or whatnot, but we'll talk about that. So... More, more importantly, let's talk about First John tonight. So, uh, before we get too far into it, uh, just want to acknowledge Psalm one twenty seven, which states that uh, unless Yahuwah, that's our heavenly Father's name, unless He builds this house, which this is a virtual house without walls, um, but regardless, unless He builds this house, then it is built in vain. So this is His house, and the Holy Spirit reigns here. And just want to say a quick little prayer before we get started. And uh, as always, we've got a lot to cover, so we won't uh, we won't dilly dally too much. So, Heavenly Father Yahuwah, we come before you in the name of your only begotten Son Yahusha Hamashiach, who many call on as Jesus Christ. And first and foremost, we thank you for him. We thank you for forgiveness of our sins, uh, for salvation through him, and we know that it is by faith in him alone, not by any works. And at the same time, Father, we thank you so much for your eternal law, which is instructions for life, instructions for living. And as your word says, it is when we walk in them, it is liberty. So, Father, I just pray that uh, you guide us tonight as we all study and learn together uh, to show ourselves approved. And we just thank you. We glorify you. We bless you in heaven uh, for everything that you do for us, this amazing world that you've created for us. We just uh, we surely just can't wait until uh, the wicked one is no longer uh no longer has dominion on this earth and that uh, we rule and reign with you for a thousand years so blessed be you blessed be yahuwah uh, through the name of yahusha jesus christ amen so brothers and sisters first john is quite the book and uh, i'm excited to go through this i hope you are too so i'm going to do a quick little screen share and i'm going to need you guys to let me know if you can't see it because i've had some issues with um with screen sharing before so let's give this a shot and i'm gonna rely relying on you guys to let me know if you can't see it i'm gonna keep my phone close because justin usually texts me if something's wrong i'm gonna check the chat real quick someone let me know if you can see this devona wilson we can see it awesome thank you and just want to say real quickly thank you to devona Larry Newport, Jason T, uh, Anthony Bates is in here. Brothers and sisters, if you guys see these, uh, the blue names with the wrenches on them, these are moderators. They're sort of leaders in the chat. Uh, they should, and Crystal S, what is going on, sister? 
Crystal S always has the best scriptures. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, they are sort of leaders uh, here, and uh, they should be able to answer any questions that you have. And a little bit later on tonight, we should have some time for question and answers. So make sure the moderators see uh, your questions. And then if one of you, uh, maybe Devona, um, if you guys can collect the questions, and we'll go over them a little bit later. Just so they can maybe see your questions a little easier, type your questions in all caps. I know it looks like you're yelling, but <laughs> just go ahead and do so. Hey, what's going on, Kevin J? What's going on, brother? Good to see you. Thank you always for your encouragement uh, on Facebook and other places. Thank you. All right, so let's go into the PowerPoint. So love in the word, a reading of 1 John. So we're going to get right into it. And like I said, some of the some of the verses I'm going to read right through. Some of them we're going to stop and, and kind of dissect. So here we go. First John, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the father and was manifested unto us, that which we have seen and heard. Declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. Actually, just real quick before we go too far. So this is uh, the same writer as the Gospel of John. And just like the beginning of the gospel of John started out with, which basically said um, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. We know that Jesus Christ, Yahusha, our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords, our Messiah, our Savior, uh, he is the word. Like literally, he is the word and the, the word manifested and became flesh and walked among us. So it, it's very much the same thing here, which... Uh, the word of life, which again is Yahusha. Praise, all praise, all glory be to him. Continuing, verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, Yahushua, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So, real quick, uh, this is we're going to break down verses 6 and 7 real quick. Which again is, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light. So, Let's take a look at Proverbs 6.23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So right here it's saying if we walk in the light as he is in the light. So as we know, Yahusha walked in the law, walked in Torah, walked in his instructions perfectly. Not that any of us are going to be able to walk in it perfectly. But certainly, we're not to forsake the light and walk away from the light as, we're, as we were taught from day one. And again, <clears throat> if we walk in darkness, which is the opposite of walking in the light, which is the opposite of walking in his Torah, or the opposite of walking instructions, we lie and do not the truth. Which, again, the truth is defined, Psalm 119, 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive, forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Pretty simple. Pretty simple, simple and self-explanatory. We are to confess our sins immediately. And again, not saying that myself or any of us are perfect. We we will mess up. And that's not like a blanket statement to say, oh, well, you know, I'm going to mess up anyway, so I'm just going to just do whatever I please. No, that's the Father sees everything, everything. That is not to be our, our mentality. But yes, when we do, when we do sin, we confess him. 
and he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to that. See that first see like that. We went right through chapter one. As we get through some of these, we're gonna we're gonna slow down quite a bit and uh, get through a lot of these meaty topics. So first John chapter two. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. So essentially, he just covered what I said. You know, just because Yeshua forgave us of all of our sins and will continue to forgive us of sins, we still are to sin not. We are still to be holy as he is holy. We are still to be set apart. All right, back to scripture right here. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. We're going to dig into this a little bit. And those of you that have been following this channel for a while know that we've been talking quite a bit about these section of, of verses right here, which, again, let's look at three and four. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. So I'm going to jump down here real quick. A lot of you know about this. This is Matthew 7. And, you know, this is this is a pretty pretty bold statement. And it's honestly, it's a statement that not any one of us ever wants to hear, which I'll jump down here. It says, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. But let's read the whole thing. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name have done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So a couple things about this. And again, if you've been following this channel, this is probably um, a little bit repetitive. But this is so important because, well, it's important. <laughs> You'll see here in a second. He says, I never knew you. So all if you search all throughout scripture, there's one verse that tells us literally how we know that we know him, which we just read. And hereby we do know that we know him. How? If we keep his commandments, pretty simple. He that saith, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. So brothers and sisters, I don't care what fancy teaching is out there, what what this pastor has said, what that pastor has said, what, whoops, what seminary has said, what your mom or dad may have said, what your brother or sister may have said. It doesn't matter. It matters what scripture says. You're not going to be, be able to rely on them come judgment day. And you're in the, you're standing before the throne. You're not going to be able to say, "Well, well, I listened to Pastor So and So, and and they said that you know we didn't have to keep the law. That you know I just I you know doesn't matter, brothers and sisters. It matters what Scripture says, hundred uh percent. Oh, we got here. Oh no. Is it buffering? Let's see. So can you guys see me now? Can you see me now? <laughs> well, I hope... Uh, I hope I didn't get too far into. I hope I didn't get too far into this, and you guys weren't able to see this. Darn it! I got a text from Devona saying that uh, it's been buffering for three minutes. Okay, so everybody's just saying refresh. Okay. Okay, everybody's okay. A bunch of people are saying no problems. All right, I'll get back to it. I um, hope, hope I don't have to recover everything. So just real quick, I, I don't know if you guys were able to see this, but in short, here in Matthew chapter 7, this is um, this is when uh, this is the, the scene of the wise and the foolish virgins when the wise are able to enter and the foolish uh, are shut out. 
and he says, uh, I never knew you depart from me. ye that work iniquity. And, um, you know, when he says, I never knew you first John three is, is by far the clear statement of how we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. So really, really simple. Uh, let's see. Okay. Next slide. So first John two verses five through six, but whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. And hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. And again, as we know, Yeshua walked in his instructions, which is known as Torah, perfectly. Again, I won't be able to walk in it perfectly. You won't be able to walk in it perfectly. But is that an excuse to walk away from the law and say that it's done away with, which we find nowhere in Scripture? Again, as we covered last week, there's quite a few verses from Paul that can be easily taken out of context and misunderstood. And certainly that's what's happened. And entire doctrines have been made out of just a handful of verses that literally contradict the rest of scriptures. So with that being said, we know that we are to walk as he walked, the best that we can. As, as Paul says in Romans 12, we're to offer ourselves up as living sacrifices. It's our reasonable service. We'll see a little bit more of that here in just a second. Let's see. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye had which ye had from the beginning. So these commandments which we had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. We know Yeshua is the word. Hallelujah. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past. And the true light now shineth. He that seeth he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. This is how the Father made us. It doesn't matter how much faith we have how well we're walking in Torah. If we don't love one another as he loved us, as Paul says in another verse, we're just like a clanking symbol. We're just a bunch of noise. Good for nothing. Let's see a little more about that here in a second. So expounding a little bit on verse nine, which again is he that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. That person is blind. Absolutely blind. So let's compare. This is Matthew 5, 21 through 22. And this is when it said, we're just back here, when it said, the true light now shineth. Well, Yeshua came and taught us how to walk in that law, that perfect law. He didn't change the law, but he taught us what it really meant and how to walk in it. Ye have heard that it was said of them of old time, thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Brothers and sisters, Scripture means what it means. It means what it says. Remember this, because I know personally a handful of brothers that claim to be walking in the light. And hate their fellow brother because they disagree on a certain topic of topic of scripture. Just keep that in mind. Matthew 23, 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye have done, and not to leave the other undone. So we see, we see right here that, you know, the Pharisees were careful to walk in parts of the law, but they forgot the weightier matters, which he says is weightier. So that means it's more important. But he also says, you should have done these and not leave the other undone, whereas many will teach you to, in today's world to have judgment, mercy, and faith, and love, and forsake the law. That is not what Yeshua said here. First John 2, 12 through 14. 
I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Uh oh, I don't know why that's. Me, I'm going to take an opportunity here to make sure everything is working. Everybody can see everything? Just want to make sure you guys can still see the slides. I'm just shrinking that text a little bit so we can read it. Okay, good. All right, good, good, good. Thank you. Okay. So 1 John 2, 15 through 16, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Wow. Just think about that for a second, brothers and sisters. I mean, I, we know we know what we're chasing after. We know that we're chasing after our Father. We know that we're chasing after truth. We know that we're running the race of faith. Do we ever stop and think about that for a second? We don't even understand what forever means yet. <laughs> I just picked this picture because I think it's a really good snapshot of the world. Sin, lies, the biggest lie right now of the world. <laughs> the very shape of it. <laughs> but, you know, in Revelation, we're, we're, told to, we're told to come out of her. We're told to come out of the world. And this scripture is very clear. If we're in love with the world, there's no love of the Father in us. It's just like when Yeshua said that we can't serve two masters. You can't serve God and you can't serve money, which we know that that's what the world runs on is money. And I know that we, we need money for our daily expenses, our, our homes, food. But certainly, many of us literally loved it. And we need to flee those lusts. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life. I was guilty. Guilty, guilty, guilty. All praise, all glory to the Father through Yeshua HaMashiach for opening my eyes, forgiving my sins, setting my feet upon a rock, and establishing my goings. And I know, brothers and sisters, you can say you can say the same for yourselves. First John two eighteen through twenty, little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that antichrist shall come, even now are there many antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. So even back in those days, John was saying there's many antichrists back then. We don't think there's many now. <laughs> Verse 19, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But you have an unction. I had to look that word up, which is an anointing. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I'm going to compare. And Yahusha answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Some would interpret this as people saying that they are literally Jesus Christ coming back. But we know that we know that Yeshua came in the Father's name. 
So I believe that many claim Jesus Christ as their Savior. They come in his name and deceive many. Antichrists. We're actually going to learn a little bit more about the Antichrist spirit that is actually very prevalent, especially on YouTube. A lot of wolves out there, brothers and sisters. First John 2, 21 through 24. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, that Yeshua is the Messiah? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Listen to this. Listen to this. This is we're gonna be, we're gonna be talking about verse twenty three. I know that we had a pretty controversial topic a couple weeks ago that shows that Scripture clearly states that there's a Father and a Son. Verse twenty three: Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. He that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. We'll be talking more about this because in chapter five, he goes in great detail as to what this actually means. But think about it. Start think, I want you to start thinking about this now. For people that say that Jesus Christ is, is the Father that came in the flesh, what are they doing? They're denying the Son. They're denying the role of the Son. They're saying there is no Son. It's just the Father. He came in the flesh. And it's, the, the flesh is called the Son. No. What does the text say? Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. He that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. By saying that Yeshua was the Father, you're making this scripture null and void, as well as many scriptures, to include the most popular scripture in the world, that God so loved the, the world that he gave his only begotten Son. It doesn't say that God so loved the world that he gave himself. Just think about that. Pray on it. Moving on, verse 24. Let that abide, let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. Very clear. So here, oh yeah, I, I dug into this a little bit. Who is a liar? This is, we're, we're uh, bringing up uh, verse 22 and 23 again. Who is a liar but he that denieth Yeshua is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. So this is kind of just tying it together. It's a sneaky doctrine, brothers and sisters. It's a sneaky way of denying the Son by saying that, no, 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 there is no Son. It's just the Father coming to flesh. Think about it. Why would we want to deny the Son? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And again, um, I, I totally forgot to put these up here. I kind of took my own thunder away. <laughs> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm going to stop presenting for just a second. I'm going to check in with you guys. But think about it. Think about it, brothers and sisters. If we're saying that Yeshua... The Son of God was the Father that come in the flesh. Are we not denying the Son? Are we not denying the role of the Son? We're denying that what he was prophesied to do. We're denying what he did. And we're denying his position. It's a very crafty way of denying the Son. Just checking in with the uh, the chat. Yep. Okay. Back to the slides. Okay. First John two twenty five through twenty nine, and this is the promise that He hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. 
but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things and is truth and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. So we know, he says right here in verse 27, and ye need not that any man teach you. Why? John 14, 26, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Hallelujah. So brothers and sisters, we know we have one teacher. That is the Holy Spirit. I'm just your brother learning together with you. 1 John 3, we're at chapter 3 now, verses 1 through 4. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. Now we're getting into love. <laughs> Again, I titled this love because we're going to see quite a bit about it. And now we're going to see a little bit about love. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. So just stopping there at verse 3, we're to purify ourselves. Again, Romans 12, offering up ourselves as living sacrifices. We know that we are the temple. Verse 4, whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is transgression of the law. Again. As we say, as we discussed last week in Galatians, Paul has been grossly misunderstood when we knew that Paul that Peter prophesied that this would happen. The law has not been done away with. The law is still intact. What did Yeshua say? He said, Not one jot, not one, not, not one jot nor tittle, or <laughs> am I getting it mixed up? Anyways, he said, Not one jot nor one tittle, and shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. He said, Till heaven and earth pass away. Not one jot. So when we're told to not continue in sin, what is sin? Sin is transgression of the law. So digging in a little bit, 1 John 3, 4. We're comparing it with Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace ye are saved through faith, and not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So hallelujah for that. Because every single one of us deserves the death. Because every single one of us has fallen short. Every single one of us was under the curse of the law. That is what being under the law means. Praise be to God through Yahusha, who offered himself, cleansed us, so that we are no longer under the curse of the law, which is the curse of death for breaking it. And in a, another letter, do we then make void the law through faith? What does Paul say? He doesn't just say no. He says, God forbid. Yay, we establish the law. We're going to talk a little bit about this word establish here in just a second. So establish. Establish, this word establish was used 158 times, and it was translated as stand 116 times, set 11 times, establish 5 times, stand still, stand by. So the outline of biblical usage, to cause or make to stand, to place, to put, set, to bid to stand by, um, to make firm, fix, establish. So I think we can get an idea of what establishing the law means. To make firm, to stand by, to set, to put. 1 John 3, 5-8. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. 
little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. So we'll see here in a little bit. You know, many will say that you just can't please God. It's just, you just can't do it, period. Well, we'll see that through the text, it says something else. And he says right here, let, little children, let no man deceive you. So he, he knew what was going to come. He said, don't let, let anybody lie to you. The scripture says what it says. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Remember, sin is the transgression of the law. Verses 9 through 12, again, chapter 3. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. So real quickly on this statement, this is a, what's called a pro. I learned this word from Sean and Ken. This is a prolect, proleptic statement. Essentially, what that means is these apostles had so much faith that they were talking about future events in the present tense. Because let's let's be let's let's be honest. We saw a couple slides ago that he that saith he has no sin is a liar. So I can't personally say. Let me take this off the screen here for a second. Hang on. So I can't personally say that I'm without sin or have no sin and that I'm not able to sin. And if any one of us were to say right now in this in this flesh suit, this imperfect flesh flesh suit, if we any, any one of us were to say right now, I can't sin. I'm born of God. It's a liar. You can sin. I can sin. These these imperfect bodies are still able to sin. So that is a proleptic statement that is a future event that is yet to happen and um so in any case that's that is what the context of that first john we'll get back to it now who so, so verse 10 in this the children of god are manifest and it's and the children of the devil whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of god Neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And why, wherefore he slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. First John 3, 13 through 16. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you, So we're going to compare with First Corinthians, First First Corinthians one eighteen, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. So don't be don't be surprised if the world doesn't hear us, if the world hates us, which we're already those of us that have decided the law has not been done away with. We want to be obedient in any way we can. We're already seeing from, from fellow believers, we're seeing hate from our fellow believers that mock us and literally despise us for wanting to, to follow the law. We want to. We love it. We realize it's liberty. It's freedom. Verse 14. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. We need to be in that state of mind. We need to be willing to lay down our lives for each other. And remember, this is this is a time in this day and age, in this especially in this country, division right down the middle. They're dividing us by political party, by skin color, by our faith, uh, and you know, even within the body of Christ, we're being divided by 
different doctrines. You know, Paul said, have no divisions among you. Yeshua, which we'll see here in a little bit, he prayed to the Father that we be one as he and the Father are one. So myself, you, others, we're, we're supposed to be one. Now, of course, correction is needed when correction is needed. But I've seen, I've seen little, I've seen brothers that literally have hate in their eyes for another brother based off of different doctrines. That's where I say this verse 14. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. First John 3 16. Hereby we perceive the love of God. Okay, so I'm just we're reiterating this right here. So this is this is a little excerpt from Ezekiel 33. Many of you know it's it's essentially the watchman's call, which you know, I don't know what what we're labeled as these days. I mean, we can call ourselves the followers of the way, uh, children of the most high. Uh, a lot of us do call ourselves watchmen because we see the sword coming and you know, we're told to to warn the people of the sword impending. And you know, when it comes to tough topics that most don't want to preach on, you know, this is one where, you know, this is love. Preaching the truth and standing firm on the truth is love. Let's read Ezekiel 33, 3 through 7. If when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. So basically what that's saying is, you know, we're, we're sounding the alarm on certain things. And if people don't take heed, well, that's on, that's on them. Verse 5, he heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. So, again, are we literal watchmen right now? I think in, in the spirit we are. And for many of us, God woke us up out of, out of nowhere. I mean, most of us three years ago were neck deep in sin and couldn't care less. Some of us six months ago, some of us 10 years ago. But I have to say from most of the testimonies I hear, the last two to three years, most of us were completely blind, completely unaware. And the father just woke us up, started showing us truth. And what does Yeshua say? To much, to whom much is given, much is required. I believe that's a parallel, parallel statement in verse. He's shown us this truth. Are we just to sit on it? No. We're to warn our brothers and sisters, regardless of the consequences. Regardless. So when myself and Justin sit up here and, and say, hey, you know, we're doing the best we can to walk in these commandments and laws, and we we say, hey, you know, we we think this is really important to the detriment of many mocking us and 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 it doesn't matter. But that is love. Saying the hard things that sometimes people don't want to hear is love. We'll see a little more of that here in a little bit. First John 3, 17 through 19. But whoso hath this world's good and seeth his brother have need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. So this is saying right here that, you know, if you see a brother that's in need, and and, and in the book of James has a, has a very close paralleling verse. I should have put that up here. I didn't. But, you know, it basically is saying, like, if you have the means to help somebody and you don't do it, he's asking you, how how does the love of God dwell in you? If if you have the means to help somebody, you won't do it. You won't lift a finger. And that's when in James, you know, James says that bold statement that nobody likes. Faith without works is dead. He said, what's your faith worth if you're not helping out your own brother or sister? 
So expounding a little bit on verse 18, which says, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and truth. Let's compare with 1 Peter 4, 8. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. James 5, 20. Let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. It's not me saying it. That's scripture. This is a passage from 2 Ezra that I love. Guard the rights of the widow. Secure justice for the fatherless. Give to the needy. Defend the orphan. Clothe the naked. Care for the injured and the weak. Do not ridicule a lame man. Protect the maimed. Protect the maimed. And let the blind man have a vision of my splendor. That, that just gets me when I read that. Let the blind man have a vision of my splendor. Protect the old and the young within your walls. When you find any who are dead, commit them to the grave and mark it, and I will give you the first place in my resurrection. So this is what Yeshua was saying earlier. You know, he's like, you paid you paid your tithes and you did this and did that, but you forgot the weightier matters of the law: judgment, mercy, faith. And you know, in another passage, he says, "You serpents." You you devour widows' houses and and you make a long prayer as a pretense. You know they just have a big show. It's all it's all just for show. He call in another passage. He calls them like whited sepulchers. Sepulchers. He's like you're all nice and white and beautiful on the on the outside, but the inside you're full of dead man's bones and all hypocrisy. So as the scripture says right here, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Let us take care of each other. 1 John 3, 21 through 24. Beloved, if our heart condemns us not, then we have confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. Let me read that again. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So, you know, again, we were saying, I was saying earlier, many will say, you just can't please God. You know, you that you that you're trying to keep the commandments, trying to please God. Well, you can't please God. Well, Scripture says something else. Because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. We, if you read through the book of book of Kings or the book of Chronicles, it'll go through each king. And you'll say, you know, this king, uh, like like David, you know, did what was right in the in the Lord's eyes. He, you know, no nothing pagan, uh, kept the commandments. Walked in his ways perfectly, except for the you know the the issue of uh, Uriah and his wife. But then you'll come off and you'll come to another king like Rehoboam, and he'll say you know he he did what was not pleasing in the Lord's sight because he didn't walk in his commandments. We'll see a little bit more on that again. So verse twenty three, and this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his Son Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandment. Just like Yeshua said, he said. Love God, love people, and on these two commandments hangs all the law and the prophets. So it's not saying that these are the only two commandments, but this basically sums it up. You can sum it up in two in, in, in two ways, loving God and loving people. And I tell you what, if you read, if you actually read through Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and you actually read these, you know, 613 laws that people are, are scared to look at, you'll realize that each one of those essentially is a as a sub definition of loving God and loving people just broken down into, you know, commands. So again, uh, this is a commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ. And, and a lot of us know him now as Yahusha, which from a lot of us know is, is the more correct way of saying it. But regardless that this is a commandment from the father that we believe on his son. So again, You'll see this is a really big topic all throughout this this book is that we believe in the Son, believe in the Son. You know, if the Scripture said we believe that Jesus Christ was the Father that came in the flesh, then that's what we would believe. But that's not what the Scripture says. Verse 24, And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. So expounding a little bit on verse 22, which said, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. 
So let's compare with some Deuteronomy 6, starting at verse 5. And thou shalt love Yahuwah thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So he wants you to eat, sleep, drink his commandments. <laughs> Verse 8. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And for those of you that have been following this channel for a while, you know, we know that the mark of the beast is either in the hand or in the forehead. It's just coincidentally that the Father's commandments are a sign on our hand and as frontlets between our eyes. What's what's between your eyes? Your forehead. Pretty interesting, right? So verse, 13, verse 17, Ye shall keep diligently the commandments of Yahuwah your God and his testimonies and his statutes which he hath commanded thee. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. So again, keeping his commandments, his testimonies, his statutes, which he commanded us, is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Let no man deceive you. There's a lot of vain teachings out there, brothers and sisters, that teach us contrary to, us, to this. And many of us grew up with it. But what does the word say? Verse 25, and it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before Yahuwah, our God, as he commanded us. So I want to expound a little bit on verse 24. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in, in I'm sorry, and he in him, and hereby we know that he abideth in us. So let's compare it with Romans 8 1. This is a very, very highly used scripture for the opposite meaning. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So to them which are in Christ Jesus. How do we know that we're in Christ Jesus? And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us. It's right there. Romans 7, 12 and 14. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. And also in 14, for we know that the law is spiritual. So many will say, we don't have to do the law. We just need to do the law of Christ. Doing the works of the law is fleshly and, and, and this and that. Well, the law is spiritual. I mean, think about it. Think about what people are saying. In Mount Sinai, Mount Horeb, when God gave the Israelites his law, did that not come from the firmament? Did that not come from the dwelling place of the Most High? Isn't everything down here a copy of what's above? There's some pretty bold statements some brothers and sisters out there are making. So now we're in chapter 4. But before I move on, I want to say hi to you guys in the chat. See how everybody's doing. Oh, thank you, brother, uh, Sister Brandy. <sighs> Ray Perkins, my family still thinks the law was nailed to the cross. It never made sense to me as a kid. They still love Christmas and Easter ham. They think I'm nuts. I hear you, bro. My family thinks I'm nuts, too. Oh, Larry Newport, amen. I love the law. Such a blessing to be awake. I love the law, too. You know, when I was in rebellion and I was living in sin, I didn't like the law because I felt guilty when I read about the law. So what did I do? Yeah, I listened to preachers that said, the law is done away with. You just believe, and that's it. Okay, that sounds good. And there's and I feel bad. You know, I feel really bad for brothers and sisters that, you know, talk ill about the law and deny the law and say that it is bad. You know, I know personally, I know there's brothers out there that that preach this. And it's because they're still living in sin. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I do. Trust me, I do. That's not, that's not the truth. It's not the truth. The law is just. It's holy. It's good. Andrew, what's going on, brother? How are you? Shalom. Andrew, you're in, uh, you're in China, aren't you? 
Where in China, brother? <laughs> uh, Cheyenne Brown, what is going on, sister? Uh, it says, I have not messaged you. Oh, okay, okay. I saw, yeah, I saw your, your message earlier. Um, the blood saves. Thank you, Lord, for the law. Amen, right? There's a passage in, um, gosh, is it in Deuteronomy? I think it's in Deuteronomy. It talks about how the nations would look at would look at Israel and realize how powerful their God was by the law and by them keeping it. Shanghai, wow, we truly are everywhere. <laughs> Everybody say hi to Brother Andrew Tang over in Shanghai, China. That is awesome. A lot of us have heard that there's uh, quite quite a few coming to Christ every day in China. That's uh, wow. That'd be an amazing place to be. But I also understand that it's um, there's a lot of underground churches. Is that right? People have to kind of go underground. Is that right? Oh. So Janet Atio, I'm in Turkey. I got bapti baptized on Sunday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the most high. That is awesome. That is awesome news. Awesome, awesome news. Uh, let's see. Jason T, easy believism is for itching ears. I know it. Trust me, I know it. I know it. Mary Wesniewski. Hallelujah. I agree. Oh, uh, let's see. Calvin Eversole, hate kingdom in context. Shalom. Oh, is, is uh, Brother Sean in here? Listen, listen, brothers and sisters, you really need to start watching on Sundays uh, kingdom in context and on Saturdays. Sean and his uh, wife, Lindsay, do the Torah portions, uh, which I upload every uh, Saturday at uh, 8 in the morning. But uh, definitely check out uh, Sean and Ken as well on Sundays. A lot, a lot of wisdom has been bestowed to those brothers, and I'm really thankful that they're here with us. Uh, let's see. Good penny. Shabbat shalom, bro. Shabbat shalom to you. Tammy Wentworth, amen. L. Wilkins, 25. Speaking of Lindsay, what is going on, sister? The Griffins are here. <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, I got a lot to cover, so we'll uh, we'll get back into it. All right, let me take a little sip here. <laughs> so yeah, we're now we're now in chapter four. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets. are are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach, is come in the flesh, is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach, is come in the flesh, is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. So even... 2,000 years ago, roughly, he's saying, again, there's many antichrists and many deceivers, many false prophets. Again, we saw earlier, Yeshua said, many false prophets, many, which I was hoping to get the, I'm working on a video right now. It's a, it's going to be a long one. You guys know I like doing short videos, um, but I'm working on a long one now. It's going to be about 40 minutes. It's almost like a mini documentary, but it's really essentially showing you through the word who is sent from God and who is not. And it's always been clear from the very beginning. And then I'll give you a little hint. It starts with Deuteronomy 13 called the Deuteronomy 13 test. So, but look, look for that video next week. I should be able to get it done next week. And, uh, first John four, four, that's what I have on my intro video or my intros. Ye are of God, little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Oh, if we only remember that every day, about the Holy Spirit that's in us, that is of God. And greater is that spirit that's in us than anything that is in the world. Hallelujah to that. And it says that we have overcome them. And we know that Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. And we all need to be in that position. We all need to love not our lives unto the death. We have to. And another thing that I've been imploring you guys to do is your testimony. I've had two brothers contact me uh, sharing their testimonies. And if you guys haven't seen them, 
it's on the community tab um who was it brother eddie and brother dave i believe um so check those out if you haven't seen them two awesome short testimonies but brothers and sisters this is our time this is our time to be a living testament a living testimony of what the father has done for us through his son jesus christ yeshua the forgiveness that we've received the new lives that we've that we've been given the the another chance that we've been granted and freedom to walk in his laws and his ways and his statutes that is his grace hallelujah let's see why aren't you switching? Okay. Yeah. Oops. Uh -oh. Okay. First John 4, 5 through 8. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth us not. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So... We've seen this. I know that we've all seen this. We, I know that every one of us has at least tried to witness to somebody. And we just see that there's like this, this wall, this barricade, this, these blinders. And it's not by chance. This is just how it is. And we know that God blinds who he blinds. And he gives sight to who he gives sight. The, even the ability to have repentance is of him. It's from him. We know that we can't single-handedly change anybody's thoughts or ideals. We just know that we're called to share our testimony and share the love and the truth. Verse 7, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So as, I, as we opened up this broadcast tonight, we know that love is a term that's thrown around a lot. It's thrown around a lot in the body of Christ, and it's thrown around a lot in the world. The world is preaching love. Is that the same love that the Bible describes? What does Paul say? God forbid. It's absolutely different. And I, see, I yet see many Christians that essentially try to use the definition of the world's view of what love is, and just slap that on the scriptures and say this is the that's the fulfillment of the law. Don't offend anybody. Let them do as they will. That's the satanic whole of the law. Verse seven through eight, beloved, let us love one another. For God, oh, I'm sorry, I'm so I'm um, expounding on this. So again, so love? Question mark. What is it? You know that song. What is love? Sorry, this is serious stuff. So let's compare with 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. And again, we saw earlier, the truth is the law. The truth is Yeshua. What is iniquity? Iniquity is transgression of the law. So, as we saw earlier, and we'll see here in a little bit, but love is walking lawfully. It beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. This is a big one right here. There's a lot of pride. There's a lot of pride, and especially in the body. It is not puffed up. Continuing more with love. Proverbs 13, 24. He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. I had to look up betimes. Basically, it means diligently. So this is obviously a father-son scenario, but it's an example of what Scripture says love is. So if I don't correct my son because I don't want to hurt his feelings or whatever it may be, that the scripture says that that means I hate him, but he that loveth him chasteneth him. And we'll see here in a second, the father does the same thing with us. Well, Hebrews 12, 6 through 7, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? So, 
and a lot of us are probably saying right now, well, God must really love me because <laughs> he's chasing me a lot. And I know I'm the same. I've gone through a lot of chastening. Ask Ray Perkins out there. I see Ray in the chat. Ask Ray Perkins if he's gone through any chastening. What is it? I think it's in, uh, Ray, if you can put it in the chat, I think it's a, is a Jeremiah 31 or Jeremiah 30, that we will surely not go unpunished for our deeds. We're forgiven. We are. But he's going to chase enough. Chasing, chasing us. Yeah. <laughs> Getting tongue twisted here. So count a joy. Count a joy. If you've been chastened or are being chastened right now, God is dealing with you as sons, and that's love. That's scriptural love for you. So now we move on to correcting one another in love because there's a right way to correct one another, and there's a wrong way to correct another. And Paul, I think, Paul has some pretty sweet words here to show us how to correct one another in love. This is 2 Timothy 2, 24 through 26, starting at 24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. So we need to be apt to teach. We need to be eager to help one another. Not like, oh, you just don't get it. Ugh. No, you need to be apt to teach, patient. Even when someone's railing you, in the face of that railing, you still need to be patient, apt to teach. How did Yeshua act? Even as he was getting ready to suffer the most bitter suffering a man can 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 suffer. Patient. Verse 25, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. So we know, <laughs> I was talking to uh, Justin and a couple other brothers a couple weeks ago, and we we're talking about how we know the word is a sword. It's, sh it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And we know that many are wielding the sword. And some are wielding it improperly. So we know that there's those that oppose themselves. They're like swinging around that sword, cutting everybody. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. So again, God gives them the repentance, not us. We're called to be humble, meek, apt to teach, patient. God gives the increase. God gives the repentance. Verse 26, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive, captive by him at his will. Back to John, uh, chapter 4, verses 9 through 13. In this was manifested the love of God towards us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world. Again, if the scripture said God sent himself into the world, that would be another thing. But what does the scripture say? God sent his only begotten son into the world. Hallelujah. That we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us. Hereby we know that we dwell in him and he in us because he hath given us of his spirit. We saw in another another verse, uh, Yeshua said that, you know, that we would know each other by our fruits and we would know each other by our love for one another. This is what we're called to do. But again, we have to understand biblical understanding of love. Oh. I, yeah, I, I doubled these up. So you get two, uh, two pretty pictures of the same scripture. <laughs> I'm silly sometimes. So now we're 14, verse 14 through 17. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus, Yahusha, is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. So once again, how many, you, you, it's gonna, you're going to be amazed how many times John 
continues to show the importance of this. So let's read the scripture for what it is. Let's let's throw out any any doctrines that we grew up with. Let's throw out anything that man will tell us. Let's look at this verse 15 for what it says. Whosoever shall confess that you whatever name you use, Jesus, Yeshua, Yeshua, Yahusha, is the Son of God. God dwelleth in him, and he in God. So again, I ask you, if you are saying that Jesus Christ is not the Son, but is the Father, you are inherently denying the Son of God. I'm going to read it one more time. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus, Yeshua, is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. If you're not confessing that Jesus is the Son of God, what are you doing? You're denying the Son. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. You see, John keeps reiterating the same topics, which are very important nonetheless. So let's talk a little bit about there's no fear in love. Because we're not to fear anything in this world. We're not to fear our fellow man. We're not to fear what the enemy can do to us. But there is something we are to fear. So I just wanted to make that clear. Matthew 10, 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are able, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to both destroy soul and body in hell. And we really need to live this, brothers and sisters. We know that this world is changing daily. And we know that people like us uh, is not going to be welcome in this world for much longer. We are not to fear them that can kill the body. So what? We know what's waiting for us, and we have to understand that. We have to take hold of that. Proverbs 9.10, the fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Isaiah 66.5, hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word, your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. So, we're to fear his word, we're to fear the most high. That's it. First John, and now we're chapter 5. First John 5, verses 1 through 3. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, is born of God. And everyone that loveth him, that begat loveth him also, that he is begotten of him. That's a tongue twister. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Pretty simple. Verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. It's very true. Very true. Again, coming from someone like myself that used to break all of his laws, when I started coming to the truth, I thought the law was hard. But once I finally surrendered and let the Holy Spirit do its work in me, change me from the inside, I've come to a place where I love his law. And his laws are not grievous. They're actually joyous. They're freedom. I know. Justin knows. Many of us know. We've seen both sides of it. So, again, the theme of tonight is love. What does the scripture say? This is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. We're going to talk a little bit more, more about this. John, 1 John 5, 3. 1, 5, 3. We're going to compare it with John 14, 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. We know that Yeshua said, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. I agree. Deuteronomy 30. 
Verse 11, for this commandment, which I command thee this day, it's not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It's not in heaven that thou should say, who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that thou should say, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. So even way back then, ver first of all, verse uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30 is, is prophetic. Chapter 30 is for this generation. But even back then, he said, his laws, his commandments are not grievous. They're not up in heaven. You can't reach them. They're not down below in the sea where you have to have someone go bring it up for you. He said, no, no. It's nigh unto you. It's right near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. 1 John 5, 4 through 6. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Hallelujah. Who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus, Yeshua, is the Son of God? Well, there it is again. <laughs> this is like four or five times now that John is like, hey, this is really, really important that you understand that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The scripture does not say that Jesus is the Father come in the flesh. So what is the scripture saying? Let's reason with one another. If the scripture says, he that overcometh the world, or who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. So what happens if we are saying that Jesus is just simply the Father come in the flesh? It's scripture saying that we're not overcoming the world. And, and earlier, so the truth is not in us. Verse 6. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, Yahusha, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth. First John 5, 7 through 8. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. We'll explain that in just a second. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood, and these th three agree as in one. This word agree here is pretty interesting. Let's take a look at it. This is the word for agree. I've highlighted here in red. So you see here it says the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, these three are one. And we'll see how Yeshua also used this term, are one. But really quickly, agree in one. We're, like, we're asking ourselves, well, why the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit are, are one, and then the water and the blood and the Spirit agree in one? Well, the word agree is, guess what? The word is are. Be, were, have. Biblical outline usage is are, be, were. So it has nothing to do with agree. Why it was changed that way, I don't know. It's just like when you look up uh, all throughout Acts, it says so many times that the apostles met on the first day of the week. You go to the Greek for first day of the week, and it says Sabbath. You're like, okay, why doesn't it just say Sabbath? Interesting stuff. But as far as the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, some will say, see, they're one. It's just one entity. Let's read uh, John 17, 17 through 21. Saint, this is, this is Yeshua praying to the Father. Sanctify them. He's talking about the apostles. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word. Listen, that they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So is Yeshua saying that, he and the Father are one entity, and that he wants us to all be one entity in them? Or is this a figure of speech? First uh, John 5, 9 through 13. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. 
He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. Let's read that again. Verse 10. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. This seems to be a pretty egregious, egregious thing for someone to deny the Son exists. Because again, if we say the Son is the Father, we are denying the Son. Verse 11, and this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These are some pretty, pretty stern words, brothers and sisters. And we need to take the, the scripture for face value. Just as we've been learning through this journey of truth, the word means what it says. And it says, he that hath the son hath life. And he that hath not the son of God hath not life. The father said, hey, if you want to get to me, you've got to go through my son. What are we doing if we say that the son doesn't exist and we just say it's the father? It's pretty rough stuff, brothers and sisters. Verse 13, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Again, many of us knew him as Jesus. We, we call him Jesus, Yahusha, Yeshua, Yahushua. I've seen some other, other translations as well. He knows who you're talking about. So, this is just my words at the bottom. Why would we deny the Son exists and claim He is the Father? Isn't that denying the Son? It's a very crafty way of denying the Son. First John 5, 14 through 17. And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And that's the key phrase, according to His will. <laughs> That doesn't mean he's like a genie and just say, you know, oh, I want this, I want that. But if we ask and it's according to his will, he heareth us. Verse 15, verse, for fifth, verse 15, and if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. If any man see his brother sin in a sin, which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death, and I do not say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. So again, just kind of talking about asking anything according to his will. James 4 kind of clears this up. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lust. So again, if you're just like, hey, you know, Father, I want a nice new car and you don't need it. Uh, he's not going to answer you because that's you're asking amiss. And I'm just that's a maybe a poor example. I, I don't know, but I'm just saying that he's not like a magic genie, and you just ask him anything. If it's not according to his will, he's not going to answer it. But if it is according to his will, it's like we were talking before. Let me just stop, stop this for a second. Like we were talking before. Like I know some brothers that want to keep his commandments, but can't keep the Sabbath because of their work schedule or. Whatever it may be, again, asking something according to his will. If you're saying, hey, Father, I want to walk in your commandments. I want to walk in your laws. I want to walk in your statutes. But this is hindering me, or this is this is in the way, that's in the way. You don't think he's going to hear that? It may not be overnight. He may not just, you know, it's all in his, his timing, but. You know, if that's something that's desired in your heart is to walk in his law, you don't think he's going to answer that? You don't think that would be something according to his will? I can't speak for him, but I can only imagine, you know? All right, let's get back to this because we're almost done and then we'll have some time for, for Q and A's, the Q's and the A's. <laughs> First John 5, 18 through 21, we know that, I think this is the last slide. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. 
And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. Boy, do we know that. Boy, do we know that. I thank God every day that he woke us up and showed us the hypocrisy and lies of the world and showed us how true his scripture is. And think about that. Again, I hate to keep harping on this, but you have to take scripture at face value. We know that scripture is true. Again, there's some mistranslations of words here and there. But when you see this same thread over and over, especially in this book, we have to take it for what it, what it says, brothers and sisters. Verse 20, And we know that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his Son, I'm sorry, even in his Son, Jesus Christ, Yahusha HaMashiach. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, Keep yourselves from idols. Amen. That's an interesting little uh, insert at the end there. Just keep yourself from idols. And, uh, you know, we have modern day idols. Just like in the, back in the old days, people worshipped wood and stone and metal and, and gold and silver. Well, do people worship gold and silver? Yeah. Do people worship wood? Sometimes people's homes are are their idols. It's their whole life. Do people worship metal? Oh, yeah. Cars and other things that are made out of metal, people worship. I was an idolater. I was. I loved cars. I spent in in from like 17 years old till about 27. Yeah. So about 10 years, I spent in almost nearly every extra penny I had on my cars. I was guilty. I was, you know, one of those tuners that, you know, put turbos on my cars and make it faster and, you know, that whole scene. I was an idolater. I idolized my car. And my whole life was about meeting up with other, other people, you know, that had nice cars and drag racing them. And I was an idolater. Praise God that he woke me up and cleansed me from my idolatry. People are idols in this television day and age. Musicians, um, movie stars, people idolize these people. They love them. You see those little girls that go crazy, you know, like back in the day with like, this may be before some of you guys' time, but, excuse me, but like, um, you know, like back in the day with NSYNC and Backstreet Boys. I mean, even today, you know, any any superstar or whatever comes on the stage, you know, people are just going nuts. People are worshiping them. Sports. Sports is an idol. You see people get dressed up for these things and, you know, I, I used to be guilty. I love football. I used to get upset when my, my team lost. I mean, this is like ridiculousness. It is now, you know, before I was just, lost of all these things and you know as we saw in, in first john earlier you know love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man loves the world the love of the father is not in him so i know most of you guys i'm sure have have pulled away from a lot of these worldly lusts but you know if not he just snuck in at the end there he said keep yourself from idols we you know we know we may not live in a country in a generation where you know, people people have like statues that you know that they're worshiping and, and calling gods, but certainly other things, paper money, gold, silver, jewelry, cars, houses. We live in a narcissistic age. People make themselves an idol, right? In any case. So let's uh let's take a look at the chat and see what is going on. Kevin Jung says guitars. Yep, guilty. Now we know the father loves music. We know the father loves music. Uh, music that that glorifies him. That's what it was made for. But I can understand how guitars could be an idol. Chris Frankenberg, Shalom. What Shalom, Shalom. Uh, MK America is 70% consumer driven. Sure is. Sure is. 
Who else is in here? Let's see where, where where's everybody at tonight. Just you can just put your your state if you want. Let's see where everybody's at tonight. Ray Perkins, golf, guilty here, gave it up. Yeah, I know. I still swing the club once in a while, but it's definitely not an idol. It's something I do once in a while. My son, I, I have a 10-year-old uh, son. He really enjoys golf, and that's we do that together. Our, uh, our routine is we'll go to the driving range for an hour, and then uh, we'll do like a Bible study after that. It's kind of like our, our thing, but I definitely don't make it an idol. Uh, let's see. Melina Washington, new kids on the block law. <laughs> I didn't, I shouldn't have brought these people up. I know. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and suck out uh, American, American idol. Yeah. I mean, that's a, like a TV show that people are in love with American idol. Like go figure. Uh, let's see. Uh, MK coveting material things. Oh yeah, absolutely. Let's see. Janet Strothman. Here's an interesting topic. Does anyone think it's wrong to have like the little ceramic Jesus with children surrounding him? I just think it's so pretty, but I see it's just a figurine, nothing more. You know, the commandment is to have no graven images. And I don't know that I can teach on this, but something told me to take down my cross that was hanging up on the wall. You know, it's, it's a carved image. People, people kind of worship that image. I, I don't know what to say. You know, I'm not condemning anybody. And this is probably, and I'm, I'm, this is my disclaimer. I'm, I'm not qualified to teach on this. This is something you have to seek on your, seek on your own. But the commandment's pretty, pretty, pretty bold it says you know don't make anything that is a graven image you know but it does say not to bow down to it you know and i and I, I realize janet you're not bowing down to these ceramic figurines but i don't know all i know is that through through prayer uh, i felt led to take down you know my cross um you know anything that could be considered an image uh let's see Devona Wilson, I saw your first video when you were at the drag race. Yeah, that was my old life. It was. It really was. It really was. Uh, let's see. Elizabeth P. Cypress. The, really? Wow. We saw and Brother Andrew is from Shanghai. Um, Tribulation, Westbrook Mall area. Radical for Jesus. What is going on? I was called a radical the other day. Extremist, I was called. Uh, let's see. Rebecca, San Diego. Hey, I was down there for a while. I was stationed down there for a little bit. Um, Arizona. Raz Piz. Ra Piz, Arizona. Um, Janet Atio, the Ark is in Turkey. Yeah, uh, the Noah's Ark. Uh, I'm actually going to do a video on this here in the future. Um, but yeah, most people don't have no idea that that Noah's Ark was literally found by Ron Wyatt and his team uh, in in Turkey. There's in and near Mount Ararat. There's actually a Noah's Ark National Park. But why does nobody know about this? It's the same reason why the the giants, the bones of the giants, are hid in the Smithsonian. Anything that connects the Bible being true, they they hide it. It's just why also why they came up with heliocentrism and they hide the biblical creation model. They're trying to hide God. Uh, B R H E Ann Coleman, Colorado Springs, Colorado. Welcome. Light in the dark. If you do not worship it, just keeping it in mind. So many worldly images. Yeah. So again, I'm. I'll tell you, I'm not qualified to answer that question because I don't know. I I don't. I haven't received anything from the Father on that. And like I said, I, I was just personally convicted to take down, you know, my cross. Um, you know, that's a whole other story. Uh, let's see. So, um, Sister Devona, any uh, or any of the moderators, any questions that were asked throughout the stream? 
I'm just looking here. Let's see here. Isaiah 9 6. Oh, you know what? I wish uh, I wish Brother Sean was on, on here with me. Uh, one of his videos, he explained this, and I'll show you. There's uh, So we went through a ton of scripture tonight. We went through a ton of scripture tonight that showed that the importance that we know that Yeshua is the Son of, the, uh, the son of God. So here in Isaiah 9, 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So, uh, all of these terms are very easy. I mean, he's wonderful. He is the, our counselor. He is God. He is Elohim. And a lot of people will say that the stance that myself, Justin, um, you know, Ken, Sean, Gavin, Tim, that we're saying that Jesus is not God. That is that is hundred percent incorrect. One hundred percent, Jesus is Yeshua is Elohim. He is God. There is God the Father. There is God the Son. Why it says the everlasting Father? That's a really good question. And I know Sean, um, Sean answered this, but I don't have that that uh, answer to that right now. What I will show you is there is a playlist that uh, Brother Sean has that actually addresses this, and uh, I will point you to that. But he had a really good explanation of that. Let's see. His channel is Kingdom of Context, Kingdom in Context, and. Oh boy, my computer is running slow today. There is a playlist here called Son of the Father. And in this, he discusses that completely. So uh, I one thing I will never do, brothers and sisters, I will never try to answer a question that I don't know the answer to it. Um, and I just don't know that answer. So um, there's probably hundreds of verses that talks about how Yeshua is the Son. Even just like the letters from the apostles, it's, it's like, you know, uh, thanks to be thanks be to the Father uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ. They, they're always making a distinction between the Father and the Son. There's like three verses that could allude to Yeshua is the Father. One of them is, um, you know, when he was talking to the, to the Pharisees or the Sadducees, he said, you know, before Abraham was, I am. And a lot of people will say, well, there you go. He's saying, I am that I am. Well, that's not what he says. But he's basically, if you look at the Greek, he says, before Abraham was, I existed, which is true. Which is absolutely true. It says in Colossians that he is the firstborn of all creation. So he was there from the beginning. I also believe, uh, and I may be wrong, but in uh, Genesis one, he said, "You know, uh, let us make man in our image. Who who is our? Who is us?" I believe that Yeshua, the son, the, the son, was with him. But so you've got before Abraham was, I am. Can't allude to that. Um, and that Isaiah 9 6, which says that he'll be called everlasting father. Um, and I think there's maybe one other verse, but you've got those compared to the nearly hundreds that literally designate that father son. So let's see. James Cook question Is it okay to use movies to prove the Bible? I don't know. I mean, what movies? I don't. I don't really watch movies anymore. I used to be a movie buff, but I got called away from TV and movies and music like since 2014. So I really don't know anything recent and relevant. Um, you know, I did watch God's Not Dead. There was some. There were some things that I didn't agree with you know, doctrine wise, but you know, I mean, it's a it's a good overall movie. So I, I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. Let's see. Er, Mac, er, it? er, er Ma, Kari, Toby. Uh, Yeshua, Living Word, Utah. Awesome. I grew up Mormon, but was delivered from that bondage. Hallelujah. That's the same bondage that Paul talks about. The bondage... The bondage that Paul was talking about was the man-made doctrines, was the pharisaical, hypocritical things, the same thing that Yeshua uh, rebuked. Uh, 
Oh, Isaiah 22. Oh, okay, Sean texted me. He said, Isaiah 22, an appointed ruler is called a father to the people. Being the firstborn of the resurrection, Yeshua is our elder. Okay. So, uh, Crystal S. Um, Sean, what, let's see, what verse in Isaiah 22? Let's see if I can pull that up real quick. Looking that up real quick. Is it Isaiah twenty two twenty two? No. Hang on, brothers and sisters. I'm looking at the verse in Isaiah twenty two that Sean apparently Sean was watching still, and he said it's in Isaiah twenty two. So let's skim through Isaiah twenty two real quick. Um. Oh, okay. Here we go. Thank you, Brother Sean. So this is Isaiah 22. Uh, let's see. And I will clothe him with, with thy robe. And this is verse 21. Okay, yeah, he said 20 through 22. Okay, so I'll start at 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will call my servant Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and I will clothe him with thy robe and strengthen him with thy girdle, and I will commit thy government into his hand. And he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Wow, okay, well, there you go. And the key of the house of David I will lay upon his shoulder, so he shall open and none shall shut. And he shall shut and none shall open. So there you go, right here. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Hallelujah. Thanks, Brother Sean. Awesome. So, Crystal S., hope you saw that and others. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ray Perkins, one five three, first John five three. Yeah, we definitely read that earlier. Uh, Devona, uh, Michelle, Miss Supermarket, or uh, Michelle, Miss Supermarket, meat clean. Oh boy, I don't know. I eat supermarket meat. I try to get organic when I can. Um, you know. Definitely talking about clean meats, which Leviticus 11 will tell you everything you need to know about what we eat and don't eat. Um, so, yeah. Ken Copelson, hey, Brother Adam, do you know what happened to Brother Justin? I haven't seen him in quite a while. Um, <clears throat> for the last, I guess, about two months, Brother Ken, uh, Justin comes on every other Friday. So he was on last Friday. He was on two Fridays before that. He'll be on next Friday. So, uh, he's on a rotating schedule. He's on on one week, on on off the next week. So he'll be with us next week. Next week we're going to do everything about the Sabbath. We're going to go over every verse we can go over about the Sabbath, and so we can see what Scripture says about the Sabbath, not man-made teachings. Ray Perkins, I miss clam chowder. <laughs> yeah, I did like the New England clam chowder. I did. Look at why. Uh, question, Michelle Sharmer, born again, does that happen at the first resurrection or when we accept Yeshua as Messiah? So that's a twofold, that's a twofold, uh, in my opinion, that's twofold. You know, like, like Peter says, we are to be as born again. We also know that in baptism, we are dead, like as in Christ and raised as a new man, um, born of the spirit. So in essentially, in essence, we are sort of born again, but the true, the true definition of like what we read earlier, I meant to say this actually earlier. Thank you for bringing that up. When we were reading in First John, it says, "He who is born of God cannot sin." Again, we know that we can sin right now. Every single one of us can sin right now. Like our flesh is imperfect, we have the ability to sin. Like we shouldn't want to, as we saw in the scriptures, um, and we know that we shouldn't, but we can. So, <clears throat> now as Sean said, that's a proleptic statement. So, literally born of God, born again, is literally going to happen when. 
our immortality is shed and we are immortal through our resurrected bodies. So when we are like Yeshua, then we are literally born of God. Right now we're figuratively born of God in, in the future, whenever this day happens that we're anxiously waiting for, uh, we will be then physically and uh, literally born of God. So um, the answer is yes and yes, <laughs> if that makes sense. Let's see. Ray Perkins, shrimp are cockroaches of the sea. Yes, they are. And the father just doesn't want us eating trash. Kevin Jung, we are no longer a slave to sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Margaret Foster, shalom. Ryan Sullivan, what is going on, brother? Ryan Sullivan, everybody say hi, Ryan Sullivan. He was with us uh, at the baptism event in um, in uh, Melbourne, in Florida. Awesome, bro. Uh, let's see. What's going on, brother Anthony? Uh, and stuck out to the, uh, someone in Russia <clears throat> claiming to be the Christ. They say he fits the description. Yeah, there, we know that there's definitely going to be people that uh, are going to just do nonsense like that. Uh, question What was Paul's thorn? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Good question. If somebody out there knows, let me know. But I don't know. Like I said, I don't want to answer questions that I don't know. Uh, let's see. Paul's thorn was demonic oppression. Okay. I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he suffered from some sin. I don't know that he couldn't put to bed again none of us are perfect even even david even king david moses killed somebody it was for a good cause but he still killed somebody david murdered committed adultery i'm sure paul sinned. well paul was an egregious murderer obviously before before the road to damascus before yeshua appeared to him he was jailing Christians, killing Christians. Paul said he was the chief of sinners. I know I was too. Claudia C., what advice would you give for a wife that wants her husband to observe the Sabbath? I I am qualified to answer this question because a lot of you guys know my situation. Um and it's something that was on my heart. The more and more we were talking about obedience, the more I wanted to walk in all his laws. And um, I wanted to observe a Saturday Sabbath, which we'll talk about more next week. But um, Sister Claudia, prayer. Prayer, prayer, because you can nag your, you can nag your husband all you want. You're not going to be able to change his mind. Just like I, I'm not able to change my wife's mind. But I tell you what, I prayed and prayed and prayed. And out of nowhere, she was willing to do a Sabbath, to do the Sabbath with me. The Father can do anything. Again, we were, you said, we were saying you were a little late earlier. We were talking about, and in, uh, in First John it says that, you know, anything that we ask of him, uh, he will answer if it's according to his will. So we know that he's not like a magic genie that where we just ask him, you know, whatever we want. And he just like, oh, hey, here, here, here. But if it's according to his will, he'll answer it. And he'll answer it as due time. And if it comes from a true desire to want to walk in his ways and keep his commandments the best that you can, which requires your husband to walk with you on that path, I have faith. I have faith he'll answer. But do you have the faith that he'll answer? God provides. God provides. Yeah, Ryan Sullivan agrees. Prayer. Ryan Sullivan is in a in a very similar situation. Nona Wilson, if God can use a donkey to speak His word, He can use the broken to prove His word. That's awesome. I was literally, I literally went through the Book of Numbers a couple days ago, and it was just in awe again at that whole story with uh, with Balaam. I was like, man, it's so crazy. 
once a donkey was like, you know, why are you striking me? Oh, man. Uh, Ray Perkins. David had eight wives. Yeah. Solomon had have many more than that. Yeah, Kevin, I, I meant to say, yeah, you know, with David, the situation with David, you know, David repented and was forgiven. Just like all of us, we've all fallen short. We've all sinned, um, you know, and, and we've sought repentance and we're forgiven. Uh, let's see. Uh... Let's see. Any other questions? If not, we'll we'll start to wrap this up because we're getting close to two hours, anyways. Uh, Raw Piz, do you think God chastening means we have to go through hardships at times? Yes, <clears throat> yes. And let me read a good scripture for that. First Peter one. Let's read that together. And do screen share so you guys can see it too. I can't wait till Dr. Pigeon does the Sefer online so, so we can start sharing the Sefer online. <clears throat> First Peter 1, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed, revealed in the last time. Now, listen to this. Here we go. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Whom, ha whom having not seen, ye love, and whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Hallelujah. So, there's many other verses, but I, I just, that one came to mind immediately. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's, it, we're not promised an easy road. We're not promised an easy road at all. Now, the interesting part, if we go back to the the if we go back to Deuteronomy and Leviticus and Numbers, God said that it would be well with us if we walk in His laws, commandments, and statutes. We know that the modern day church, modern day churchianity, does not walk in His ways, commandments, and statutes. Why is there a lot of trouble? Why? Where are the days of the healing? We and we, we know thanks to Brother Justin that we're not talking about this divine healing prosperity gospel stuff that we see where you know someone shakes a coat and like people fall down and they're apparently healed no where are the days where you got two elders lay their hands on somebody and they're healed where are the days of real tongues not this blabbering stuff real tongues well is it maybe possibly because we haven't been walking his commandments and ways and statutes what happens when a body of believer co believers come together that are truly walking in his ways, statutes, and laws, and commands. Well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Yeah. You know, and um, yeah, straight is the way. Narrow is the way. Broadly, the Broadway leads to destruction. And Yeshua says, "Many be there. Many is the is the bigger portion. It's most many be there that go in by the broad gate. 
that leadeth to destruction. He says, few be there that find. And then later he says, many are called, but few are chosen. Why shouldn't we take our walk seriously? Why would we take a few handful of verses from Paul and say, hey, yep, throw out the law. Okay, anyone else? Any, anyone else? Any other questions? If not, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, oh, yeah, here, Ray. Thank you. Ray Ray and Crystal S. are like the, the scripture machines. Thank you. This is uh, from Ray Perkins, Isaiah 48.10. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. I know Ray's testimony, and I know my testimony, and I know Justin's testimony. For a lot of us, not all of us were the prodigal son. Not all of us completely fell away and, and were complete, utter disgraces. But yeah, God chose me in the furnace of affliction. I was at the bottom of my life. I hit rock bottom. I had thoughts of suicide because I was that utterly depraved. I realized how disgusting I was. And from that moment, you know, God picked me up. I'll tell you guys my I'll tell you guys my full my full uh, testimony one day. Um, I got into a really bad car accident and I should have died. And I know God saved me. I wasn't I, I was a believer back then, but I was lost. I was way lost. But I knew I knew He saved me. I knew He saved my life. I knew it. And. I kept uh, I kept drinking for a while after that, but it wasn't too much longer. And then I started to seek his face. But I can tell you right now, I, Adam, should be dead right now if it wasn't for our Heavenly Father and his grace and his mercy. I am supposed to be dead right now. Not just because I transgressed the law and I'm a, I was a debtor to the law, but I should have died. And it was a miraculous night, and he let me live. You know, Yeshua, Yeshua says that he that he that uh, was forgiven little loves little. He that was forgiven much loves much. I was forgiven much. How about you, brothers and sisters? Were you forgiven little or forgiven much? And how much should you love? Seeing that tonight as the theme is love, how much should you love? I'll leave you with that. I'll leave you with a couple other thoughts. Again, remember, how many times in First John did he say, he that hath the Son, he that acknowledgeth the Son, hath life, hath the Father. He that denies the Son, denies the Father, and does not have life. Think about that. And lastly, testimonies. Put your testimonies out there. Put it on paper. Put it on Facebook. Put it on YouTube. Put it somewhere. Just do it. It's time. Pray on it. Send it to me. I'll share it. Excuse me. Oh, text from Justin to make sure everything's all right. Yeah. Oh, well, <sighs> the car accident. All right. So Justin said, you know, I should talk, tell about the car accident. Okay. So I told you guys a little bit. I'll, I'll tell it. The car accident. This was uh, 2012. I was coming home from a where was I? I was at Hooters with my friends. It was a fantasy football draft party. I was drunk off of off of my you know what. I drove home and this road I was driving home on, it's a it was a national it was a nationally protected land. It's really weird. Um, it's in Virginia. It's called um, um is it called a James River Highway? I can't remember. But there's a road that goes right next, it drives right alongside the, um, the James River. And it's a federally, federally, federally protected land. There's the, the laws are so strict on that, on that road that you can't drive a commercial vehicle with, with lettering on the sides. Like they'll just pull you over and tell you to turn around and get off the, the road. That's how protected it is. It's, it's clean. There's never any litter. There's never any abandoned cars, nothing. I mean, it is just the, the nicest road. It's beautiful. Um, and like I said, it runs right along the ocean. So, like I said, 
Never one. I've driven that. I drove that road for years. Never once did I see one abandoned car ever, ever, ever. So I was driving, and I was coming around a corner, and the way the road was pointing was pointing towards the ocean, the the James River. It's it's brackish water. It's the ocean. The the Atlantic Ocean feeds into this river. And right, so let's say this is the 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 embankment. This is the road. I was coming along. There's no guardrails, and if you go, as I was going, I fell asleep apparently on this corner, and I was going straight towards the water. No guardrails. I would have gone straight into 50-foot deep water. That night, exactly where I was, there was an abandoned truck there. So I ended up hitting the truck instead of going into the 50-foot deep water, which I would have drowned because I would have woken up as the car was already however many feet underneath the water. I would have died. Hands down, I would have died. But there was a truck there, and it stopped me. I must have hit it. They said I hit it probably anywhere from 50, 55 miles an hour or so head on. I walked out with literally just a few scratches. And anyways, I know that I was supposed to die that night, and I deserved it because at that point in my life, I wasn't being a full-time father to my kids. I was a drunk. I was a wreck. I was an utter wreck. And God saved me, without a doubt. That road, I never once saw an abandoned car before or nor after. He saved me. And that's my testimony. What's he done for you guys? I think it's time to share. So... Thanks for encouraging me to do that, both of Justin. I'll tell you guys the the full the more of it later on, but I, I just wanted to at least just share that part. So again, he's forgiven me of much, and so I love much. And I'll never leave him. Ever. Never ever. How could how can we at this point? How can we leave him? There's no way. <laughs> oh. Anyways, so I'm gonna put my uh, I'm gonna put my email in here. My email is parable of the vineyard at gmail.com. You guys put up your testimony. As long as it's coherent and people can understand it, uh, and there's not cussing and you know it's it's a clean video, I'll, I'll share it. I'll clear. I'll share it. Send it to me. Email it to me. I've already done it for two brothers. Who's next? Again, Revelation 12, 11, we overcome the wicked one by the blood of Yeshua, by the blood of the Lamb, and the power of our testimony. Easy. Easy, easy. Anyways, so, brothers and sisters, we're going to end tonight. Uh, if this is your first time tonight, uh, again, put it in the chat. Let us know that this is your first time so we can welcome you. Um, if you're returning, hey, welcome back. This is uh, this is a family of believers and we speak truth. Some of it is liked, some of it is disliked, but as you saw earlier, the Ezekiel watchman call uh, is to, to sound the trumpet regardless of whether it's popular or an unpopular message. Um, speaking about obedience in the law is not popular. It's not, but it's the truth. So regardless of how many brothers will condemn me, myself, Justin, Sean, Ken, Gavin, Tim, others, doesn't matter. We're charged with speaking the truth. We're not charged with tickling your ears. First time. Oh, hey, Gene uh, Desiados. I hate messing up last names. I'm sorry. Desi Desiados. Gene Desiados. Ken Copelson, my first time on this channel. Hey, welcome, brother. Sean Gerber, God is good. I mean, I agree. I agree. God's chosen. Hey, welcome. Welcome here. Um, GIY 147 first time here welcome Christina Brantley Wood first stay strong first time here welcome we do this every Friday every Friday at 8pm central um, you know sometimes we have messages that aren't popular they're hard to hear sometimes but here you'll find the truth we have no agenda no agenda other than the truth here 
Monica B, first time here. Shalom, shalom to all. Ra Piz, first time in the chat, but have been following for a while. Awesome. Again, we do this every Friday at 8 p.m. Central. Janet Struthman, I'm thankful Yeshua spared you. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Because I've been reunited with my kids. I've had three more kids since. Um, beautiful wife. Beautiful ministry. Beautiful brothers and sisters. The truth is in me. The testimony that God sent his only begotten son is in me. Just like it's in with you. The world is is caving in on us, but <laughs> we uh, we have faith. We have faith and we're waiting on him just like he told us to. So, praise Yah. Praise Yahuwah. Psalm 91. Thankful. So, in any case, all right, we're gonna end tonight, brothers and sisters. Let's. Uh, if you don't, if if before you leave, if you don't mind, go ahead and either click. It takes you like one second in like a movement of your finger or your your hand if it's a mouse. Click the like button if you enjoyed tonight. If you didn't enjoy it, click the dislike button. But you have to choose one or the other. You have to. That's all I ask from you. Like or dislike. Choose you this day. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, Rhonda Johnson, first time here. Awesome. Please pray I stop smoking cigarettes. That is something else the Father delivered me from. I'll never forget. I keep randomly. I'll never forget. I was getting ready to go in the Marine Corps, and I, I had already signed up, and I was in the delayed entry program. And I, I think I had like another two months before I before I went in. And one of my friends that I was working with, um, I, I used to go out, go hang out with him on smoke breaks. He was a, a Marine Corps reservist. And he said, dude, you better just start smoking now because you're going to smoke when you're in the Marine Corps anyways. He's, my, he's like, you might as well just train your lungs now. I'm like, okay. <laughs> anyways, I smoked for eight years. And um, boy, am I glad the Father delivered me from that. So you can do it. With the, with the power of the Holy Spirit, you can do it. It says that through Christ we can do all things, which includes quitting cigarettes. And for me, it was alcohol. I mess with other stuff. I mess with prescri prescription uh, medication, um, but yeah, alcohol was was my thing. I uh, I was drinking, you know, a fifth like every two nights. It was bad. It was really bad, and I never thought I'd be able to quit. But he broke me, and he fixed me. He can do it. So yeah, uh, Sam, Sam, our body's a temple. We have to remember that. We have to remember that. It's hard. It's hard. It really is. God's chosen. I was an alcoholic for eight years, ready to die in the hospital, and the Lord saved me seven years ago. And Oh, it's going too fast. I can't read it. In my whole family, a lot of testimony. Thank you, Christ. Hallelujah. Same here. Same here. Yeah, and here's a good verse to end with. Thanks, Ray. Isaiah 51, 7. Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose law is my heart. Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be ye afraid of their revilings. Of their revilings. We have nothing to fear. The only thing we are to fear is the Most High himself and his word. So we're going to end it tonight. Let's, let's end it with a little bit of prayer. Again, um, if you don't mind, just hit the like or dislike button. Either one. Either one. Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, the Most High, the creator of heaven and earth, we thank you first and foremost for, well, creating every, all this. We're told to admonish the work of your hands, to see the glory, to see how you are in all in creation. And we thank you for the firstborn of creation, Yahusha HaMashiach, who you sent, your only begotten son, to forgive us of our sins, to cleanse us, to bring us back to you. Thank you to him. Thank you for him. And just want to thank you for brothers and sisters like this that we're able to get together, read the word together, learn together, to grow in you so that we can wait together for you. He told us to stay occupied, to stay faithful and ready at your coming. And we just pray that we can be more like you each day until that day when we will literally be like you. 
as your word says, to be born again, born of incorruptible. Father, just lead us, lead us daily so that we may know your will for each and every one of us. We know that you've given each and every one of us a task, large or small. Each one of us has a task. Each one of us has something that you've given us to be able to, to show your love. And I pray that each one of us knows that. And I pray that each one of us prays to be shown that every day. So just like Yeshua said, not our will, Father, but yours. Your will be done. And I pray that we each walk in that every day. And I pray that each one of us knows the importance of faith and obedience to your eternal law. Thank you for everything. And thank you for Shabbat as we continue to celebrate. In Yahushua's Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, hey, thanks again for joining us. Again, we do this every Friday, 8 p.m. Central. Um, of course, God willing, Abba willing. And uh, don't forget, tomorrow at uh, 8 a.m., the uh, Torah portion that uh, Brother Sean and his and his wife Lindsay do, Sunday night at 6 p.m., I think 6 p.m. Central. Uh, Brother Sean and Ken do a show called Road to Rescue. It's all about the day of the Lord, the day that we're really waiting for her. Um, if you haven't seen any of those, boy, uh, there's a whole playlist. Catch up. There, there's such a ton of information. Uh, on Monday nights at 7 p.m. Central, Brother Gavin uh, has a show called The Narrow Road. And uh, on, on Tuesdays, Brother Tim, however, last Tuesday, Brother Tim was traveling, and he's still traveling this Tuesday. But the following Tuesday, so not this Tuesday coming up, but the following Tuesday, Tim will actually be staying at my house, and we'll be doing – this together Tuesday night, but brother Tim is on Tuesday nights at 8 PM central. So just so stay tuned. Um, we don't, we're not here every night, but, uh, four nights a week, we've got content for you and, um, just love you all. Like I said, if uh, this is your first time, go ahead and click subscribe. And again, do me a favor and click either like or dislike before you, uh, log off tonight. So, uh, love you brothers and sisters, uh, stay faith, stay in faith. And as Paul says, run that race. We are running that race, and let us continue to race. And, and what does he also say? One has to, for one to win, one has to strive lawfully. So let us strive lawfully, and uh, Shabbat Shalom to you, and all glory, all praise, all honor to our Heavenly Father. Some call God. I, called I call him Yahuwah. Some call Yahweh. Um, all honor and glory to him through his only begotten son, Yahusha, Yahushua. Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Shalom.